Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video to help you step into being a conscious purpose-driven entrepreneur. This is the place where we help you remove the blocks that hold you back from stepping into your purpose and manifesting abundance. So I'm super excited today to talk to you about a topic that has traditionally been um, sort of subconscious or unseen, that we all hear about how we are designed for great things. We have that knowing within us that we are here to do something that matters. We are here to be of service. We are here to help the world heal. And we also hear people say that we're afraid of our power or that we're playing small, but it doesn't really click. It doesn't really make sense until you start to dig deep into what does that mean? Am I really playing small? Why do I play small? How do I play small? Are you sure I'm playing small? I'm pretty sure I'm a good person. I'm pretty sure I'm doing great things as best as I can, but what's my purpose, right? We have all these questions. We're, we're really not clear on how small we are, are playing or conversely, or along with that, how big and powerful we actually are. Now we hear people say that we're scared of our power or you know, our greatest fear is not, not um, our wounding or our fears, but rather how powerful we are. And a lot of that, I've, I heard these things before I truly understood them, right? I would hear people say that and it would make sense. There's kind of a knowing, right? It's, there's some resonance with it, but I really didn't understand what that meant until I was on the other side of it. And I did not see how I was playing small. I would say that looking back, the one thing I did realize was that I wasn't where I was supposed to be that knowing that oh, it was just like a it's like a rub it's like a grinding feeling of having to go through daily life with that nagging awareness that i was not where i was meant to be that nagging sense of i'm supposed to be doing something that matters and a full well knowing that my corporate career was not cutting it now of course I'm a mother and that is where I am supposed to be for my kids. That is an important job, if you will, right? To, to be present and to, just, to show up for them fully is part of my purpose. But there still was that knowing that there is something greater. There is something bigger that I'm capable of more, that we have so much within us to share the ability to nurture and heal and guide and hold space for and we know this there's an innate knowing within us but we can't quite figure out one why can't i figure out what the path is to fulfilling that or to satisfying this urge this craving this unquenchable thirst and two how am i playing small if i don't understand my gifts if i don't understand what i'm supposed to do i don't understand my purpose then how could I even be responsible for playing small? And so that's what this video is all about. How do we play small? How do we overcome this inhibitor that seems to be some <laughs> unseen fortress that keeps us between, uh, keeps us from where we're meant to be and what we're meant to do in life? So if you follow me, you know, I talk a lot about conditioning, programming, and sometimes what's known as complex trauma. It really is the human condition. I hesitate to use the word trauma because so many people say, ah, the big T word, I don't have trauma. My parents were loving, my childhood was pretty good, whatever it might be. The truth is we all have this challenge of feeling worthy. And sometimes that does come from feeling like enough um, a, a willingness to rock the boat, right? Sometimes that does come from a challenged childhood, or sometimes it just comes from the conditioning and programming of our world today. Society, media, products, marketing, music, television, all of it, it doesn't matter. It is, it's constant input into our subconscious. And from a marketer's perspective, which I would like to consider myself an integrous marketer. I don't use these tactics, but many companies who I have worked for will admittedly go after your weak points. 
they will make you feel like you are not enough unless you buy this product. You are not pretty enough unless you wear this makeup. You are not cool enough unless you drive this car. You are not hip enough unless you listen to this type of music, right? Not enough unless is the message, right? And so that is the conditioning and programming and it can come from trauma in childhood. Trauma does not always mean that someone, you know, physically or emotionally abuse you. It can also just be your perception, it can be your perceived lack of feeling loved, cared for, seen, heard, nurtured, or safe. So regardless of where this comes from, it doesn't, it's never about blame. It's never about pointing fingers and it's never about excuses. It is only about understanding what is the root of the weed that I am trying to pull. What is the block? And it shows up in very subconscious ways that can be very difficult to see. And everything that I share on this channel is all learned by experience. This is, you know, life master's degree or life doctorate um, in addition to the professional one that I'm pursuing. But more so, I, I really speak from the heart around what I have experienced, what I learned and how I overcame it, because I'm a really intelligent person. I'm very, very capable. And I'm sure you are, too, because I know if you're here, if you're resonating with me, you're a conscious purpose driven entrepreneur. You have big dreams. You have big goals. You have the capability within you. You are more than capable. And that can be sort of the, the dumbfounding part about this is like, we have that sense of, I know I can do this. I manage billion dollar portfolios in the corporate world. I could ask for hundreds of millions of dollars in the contract, negotiate it, secure it, and write the damn contract myself. But when I first tried to start a business, I couldn't ask for a hundred dollars an hour. It made no sense. I couldn't put myself out there. I, I was too afraid to be seen. The judgment, the criticism, the ridicule that I was certain I would receive. This is what causes us to play small. This is what causes us to shrink back. Now, part of the, the conscious heart centered, um, <laughs> dilemma, um, also part of the complex trauma dilemma is that we are hypersensitive. We are empathic. We are very attuned to the other. We are very aware to this, to the point of feeling what they feel hearing what they say, knowing what they're thinking. And that can be a detriment when we don't understand how to manage it. It is one of the biggest reasons why we play small. It is our awareness. It is our sensitivity. It is our being in tune with the other. Of course, as with most things, your greatest weakness can also be your greatest strength and vice versa. Your greatest strength can also be your greatest weakness. So the plight of the light worker or conscious purpose driven entrepreneur is that we often experienced hardship in childhood, whether that was from a, a, a sense of not feeling safe, seen, heard, cared for, or loved, but also it could just be from that conditioning from the world, like I mentioned. But either way, we came in with a very powerful skill set. We came in with really big energy. We came in shining bright. And people don't like that. And that's the conundrum is there is something so special and so powerful about every single one of you. There's not a person on this planet that wasn't born with a purpose. Now, not everyone will identify as a conscious purpose-driven entrepreneur or a light worker, but every single person has a purpose. Every single person has the capability to be tremendously powerful and to shine extremely brightly, to be big. But the conundrum of it all is that bigness, that brightness, that power, was part of the reason we were ridiculed. It was part of the reason that we were made fun of, shut down, told we were too much, too loud, too optimistic, too gregarious, too good at anything. We may have also chosen a difficult life because in truth, at the end of the day, as much as it sucks that it's true, difficulty, 
makes us powerful, even more powerful. It makes us strong. It brings out the best eventually when we are willing to go through the healing process. So to answer the question, what causes a conscious purpose-driven entrepreneur to shrink back, to play small? What causes a light worker to dim their light? It is often the sensitivity, the awareness of the other and the awareness, the subconscious, right? Subconscious means below consciousness, below our awareness. It hides out in our blind spot. There is at a subconscious level an understanding that our big, beautiful, bright light, our big, powerful, strong gifts intimidate people, it triggers people. We rock the boat. We are catalyst. We are here to affect change. And as I say that, I am flooded with what I like to call God bumps. God source, divine creator universe says yes. <laughs> You are not alone. That is what this channel is all about, is you are not alone. You are important. We need you. We cannot do it without you. The world needs the gift that only you can offer. Now there is a solution to this challenge and it's not, thank God, it is not just bootstrapping it or toughing it out or pushing through, although there will be some of that. But the beautiful thing is, there is something, it's a relatively new emerging therapy in psychology settings. It's, it's used in traditional psychology settings. It is not necessarily a spiritual modality, although I have added in the energy healing to make it so for, for my community, but there's something called brain spotting. Brain spotting, bring, I'm going to bring out a, a pointer here. I have to warn people because they seem surprised and shocked when I do. But I, what we do is we use a pointer to find an access point through your eyes. Your eyes are directly connected to your limbic brain. The limbic brain is what holds the program. The limbic brain is what is sort of the gatekeeper to either the trauma or the programming that is in the body. It is essentially similar to the subconscious brain. It's the reptilian brain, that oldest part of the brain that's in charge of fight or flight. That's where the programs live. That's what we need to work with to be able to reprogram your subconscious. The body keeps the score and that's kind of the key here. That's why talk therapy alone does not work. So when we go in and we use brain spotting, we use energy healing and we call in the support to remove these blocks and these beliefs and this programming, you become free. You are less sensitive to other people. You are less triggered by your traumas. You are able to see how limiting beliefs and limiting programming and conditioning hold you back. And it does hone down the sensitivity from the, from the aspect of shifting and changing the belief which shifts and change the perspective and the story which allows you to feel your sensitivity in a different way i don't want to say that it takes away your sensitivity because that is a superpower in and of itself and we need that and it becomes amazingly <laughs> an amazing gift amazingly powerful when we can use it we can wield it with intention without being held back by the fear of rejection the fear of the discomfort that we feel when we rock someone's boat. So through brain spotting, through reprogramming the neural pathways, which is biologically possible. There are doctors out there who have studied this and written books on how to create new neural pathways and dendrites consciously. There are ways to work with your nervous system consciously to calm it down. And what we do by re reprogramming the uh, limbic brain is that the, the limbic brain no longer interprets external stimuli as a threat. And so it doesn't activate the fight or flight mechanism as frequently or as intensely, which causes the nervous system to stay more balanced. We remain more in our parasympathetic nervous system state in that calm growth and repair, rest and digest, feminine, magnetic, attraction mode and we are not as frequently in the fight or flight masculine defense resistant mode and that is so key because if you have that conditioning or programming 
or, or trauma that teaches you that the world is not safe or that people can't be trusted or that life is hard or that relationships are hard, then you are most often in that hypervigilance. You're constantly gripping the steering wheel of life, trying to figure out what's the next problem? Who do I need to be in this situation to prevent that problem? What situations or scenarios or strategies do I need to put in place to prevent that problem from happening? You are essentially trying to do God's job at that point. And it is only when we are able to step into that rest and digest, growth and repair, feminine magnetic state of being that we are able to attract to us and allow the support that is meant to come in that will help us remove those programs, change the story, change the perspective, and change how it feels when we trigger someone else. So this is the key. Our, our recognition of how someone else is feeling makes us feel uncomfortable. Our empathy, our empathic abilities, our sensitivity means when I make you uncomfortable, when I shine bright and I'm big and I'm powerful and I'm okay with taking up space and I love my life and I'm happy, damn it. <laughs> I am not gonna be mel melancholy or or seem low, low key, right? To keep you from feeling bad. I'm no longer gonna play that game. I will not shrink back to prevent your discomfort. And when we are willing to do that, we're still gonna feel their discomfort, but we have a new story. We have a new perspective. And we're able to sustain that one because our nervous system is not shot anymore. We're not in that adrenal fatigue because we don't constantly live in that fight or flight. It's a, it's a small segment now of our life that we feel that activation versus all the time. And so when I trigger, you and I make you uncomfortable, I can feel you. I know you're uncomfortable and I love you no matter what. And I am more than willing to sit in this with you. And I will stand in this discomfort with you, but I will not solve it for you. I will not fix this problem. I will not shrink back. I will not overgive, but I will stand in it with you because I know that because I have triggered you, I have given you a gift. The gift is the trigger because as we shine brightly, we cast a shadow and they don't want to be in the shadow, but that shadow helps them realize that they're not shining brightly. We are the catalyst. We are meant to trigger people. It is not that there's something wrong with us or that we're broken. That is who we're meant to be. That is what we're here to do partially. You have other gifts. They're buried beneath the trauma. That's a whole nother story. Get the trauma out. Who you are, are, who you are meant to be will come through. Your gifts will come through. You'll realign to your design. You have special talents and gifts. You're meant to be part of the new earth construction team and contribute your gifts to helping build those new systems. But that again is besides the point. One of the things we are here to do is to be that catalyst, to be the mirror that helps people see. If you're happy, you're excited, you're enjoying your life, and that bothers somebody, we need to question that. That is not your fault. And those who are triggered by that will need the loving, compassionate witness to help them see that that's not a good thing. Me shrinking back for you means I'm enabling your unhappiness. I'm enabling your playing small. I'm enabling your shrinking back my showing up for you my 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 refusal to shrink back and play small means i'm giving you permission to do the same so let's remember that the veil maya the illusion is the mind it is our perception it is our beliefs it is our perspective and so initially we received the subconscious message that are shining bright or are being big and taking up space and rocking the boat meant that there was something wrong with us or that we don't belong here. But the fact of the matter is, the truth is, it actually means we're doing a really good job. It actually means we're really strong. It actually means we're doing what we came here to do and we're affecting change. Playing small and 
keeping everything smooth and calm does not shift and change the world. So let's shift our perspective. Let's ask for a miracle because a miracle is a shift in perspective so that we can heal, step into our purpose, shine brightly, rock the boat, trigger the crap. <laughs> Not intentionally. We are we are acting from love. We are we are very much always driven by love. We are very much always heart-centered. I care very very much about how you feel. I'm speaking as if I were speaking to anyone I ever encounter, but I will not play small. And if my being big and shining bright triggers you, I do apologize that that is not something I can fix for you. And I really do want to be here to help you and to hold a nurturing, safe place for you as you walk through whatever block that is. And I'll do everything I can to help you but I will not fix it for you. You have to do it on your own. So no more shrieking back, no more playing small. If you can't quite seem to move through it, if you feel like I want to shine bright, I want to be big, I want to step into my purpose, I'm here to do this thing, I want to be seen, I want to teach, I want to share what I know, I want to help people, I want to be of service, but if you have that but, it feels like a glass ceiling you just cannot break through, that is going to require some sort of somatic healing. Doesn't have to be me, doesn't have to be brain spotting, but know that the body is the key. That Einstein says you cannot solve a problem from the level of consciousness in which it was created. That essentially is by saying, I can think my way out of this. You're saying I can solve the problem from the same place it was created. The brain identified this certain external stimuli as the trigger or the issue and that same brain is not able to reprogram itself the body has to be involved in helping reprogram okay all right i love you my friends i will be here always for you if ever you need me there are links for three free 30 minute healing sessions below if you'd like to give brain spotting a try i'd love to offer that to you otherwise if you want to join the community jump into the new, new earth construction team where i offer all sorts of courses on understanding the brain the body things of that nature we are just getting started so if you join us now you will be considered a founding member and grandfathered in at the low price of 20 dollars a month and of course everything that i offer will be poured into this community so i really want to make it as accessible as possible this is the best way that i can do that and not to mention you will have access to all of your family members and be part of creating heaven on earth all right. I love you, my friends. Please do make sure you like, subscribe, and share if there's anybody that could benefit from this. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video. Namaste, my friends. Sending you so much love. Bye for now.